so thank you for this introduction. So I will present uh, the Mundi platform. Uh, so it is called Mundi Web Services, but I refer to it as Mundi. That's way easier, and uh, we we do that for for a better understanding. So the, the platform is in operation like the others for two and a half year now, uh, and the objective of this last years was really to make the, the platform useful for the users and in order to help them to find the data, the right data they are looking for. So we are also working uh, a lot in this also digital twinners initiative, uh, which, is, which was launched by ESA, uh, which tried to use a platform like ours in order really to be able to digitalize uh, what's happening on Earth and trying to simulate some uh, events that will come. Um, so interesting focus that show that we can do uh, prototyping on the platform and also, uh, as the title say, industrial processing. So I will try to show uh, all the range of possibility on, on the platform uh, through this presentation. Uh, so to start uh, a quick presentation of Mundi. So Mundi was built in order to uh, be able to face the, the challenge of exploring Earth observation data. Um, so the, the idea here is really to help you to be able to combine satellite data uh, with your own data, with other data you may have. Um, the other thing we want to make possible is trying to be able to uh, understand the data, select the data you need to do use, download it, store it uh, as you need, uh, and also be able to use your skills, tools, and manpower in order to really find the added value from the data. Uh, and of course, what we do is loading every day and storing petabytes of data in order for this data to be available very quickly for the users we have, and also being able to process the data with high performance computing capabilities. So all this point, in order to answer all this point, uh, the platform was built on four pillars. So one is the cloud, uh, we, are, we have a partners uh, in Germany called the system and he deployed a public cloud called Open Telecom Cloud, where you will find most feature you will find on other cloud. Uh, for example, container, a cloud container engine in order to be managing your Docker uh, very easily. You will find a lot of package solution uh, like a database as a service that are also fine and even artificial intelligence uh, as a service, I would say, because we have a tool on the cloud that help you to develop your own uh, artificial intelligence algorithm based on satellite data, but on other data if you want to. So this was the cloud part. So on the bottom left, you see the tools. So we are also offering tools to exploit, to access, uh, to process the data that we are offering and also combining, you will be also able to combine data uh, to, to, to find what you're looking for into the data. Uh, third pillar on the bottom right is the support. So my team uh, and even la on, on a larger scale, ATOS is there to support the, the, the users of the platform. So we have a dedicated help desk uh, which is accessible as soon as you create an account, a free account on Mundi. So the support is really here to help you to access the data, uh, help you also to use some of our tools. I'm thinking, for example, our Jupyter Notebook uh, I will talk about later. Uh, so any support will be done by our help desk. It could be technical, but it, and it can also be a business support if you want to launch your service and want to promote your service, we have a marketplace where we are promoting a large range of services that are either built on Mundi or have a partnership with us. Uh, so this was a, uh, about the support. And last point, and maybe most important, is the data. So we have a large data collection, and I'll talk about it uh, on the next slide, which is there. So basically, the, the data we are hosting are all the Copernicus program. So it's all the set of data that you see on the left. So we do have all the Sentinels. We also uh, host or have access to 
most Copernicus services. So every day we are ingesting seven terabytes of data. And this ingestion of data is very important for us because it has to go very quickly in order to make the data very quickly available for our users. So we, we work on this topic of ingestion for the, since the beginning of the platform. And now we, we have the data, I would say 95% of the data are in Mundi in less than 15 minutes. So we, we're pretty happy to have reached this milestone uh, and we want even to, to, to have a, 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 a shorter delay in the coming days in order really to, to offer a platform which is kind of synchronized uh, with the, the satellite uh, acquisition. We also have, apart from the Copernicus program, we also have other mission like the Landsat, so the American mission, uh, accessible for free. Uh, we are partnership with very high resolution providers, uh, which will be seen a bit more on our platform in the coming days. Uh, so you will be able to browse a catalog of very high resolution data. Most of them will be commercial data. Uh, but still possible to have a look at it and order some of the data uh, if you need it for your project or your service. Uh, the same, uh, we will do the same for SAR collection, uh, so high resolution commercial SAR collection as well will be available. And after we're also focusing on other kind of data, it's not satellite data, it's a bit different. Uh, we call it non-Earth observation data. Uh, here I'm talking about Internet of Things data, so sensor data that can be seen and they can be very helpful combined with satellite data in order to have a, a focus on some area and have a better resolution. Uh, we also have weather data available on the platform through API. Um, and we have, I would say, a reference data, so a digital elevation model available on the, on the platform with 2.5 meter of resolution, which is a good reference in order to build services on top of it. It is not mentioned there, but we also have some drone data that are made available from some partners. And we truly believe that this combination of data uh, can help to create new services. So a new thing that will come in the coming days uh, is the access to the offline data. Because I say that we are ingesting every day 17 terabytes of data, but the full Copernicus program is representing a lot of petabytes of data. We, we have an archive of 40 petabytes of data. So all these 40 petabytes are not online. We have it on an archive. So in the coming weeks, you will have an API which will access the archive if you need offline data and retrieve this data online. So we do have this service already on the platform as a graphical interface. So soon we will have um, an interface, an API, which will help you to do that. So regarding data, we are in a way where we think that people should be able to access all kinds of data they need. So we try to develop services to help users to access this data. And we are trying also to make sure that this different point of uh, of access are interoperable. So meaning we're trying to use the same protocols, the same standards to offer all kinds of data in order for you just to change a few parameters to, have, uh, to access different data. So this is it about the quick presentation of the platform. Uh, so now talking about prototyping of the platform. So what it means, what services you can access uh, for free to prototype uh, that part of this section. So main services that are offered by Mundi are of course this access to the satellite data. So you have different ways to access the data. Uh, we have, I would say, three main services to access the data. So one of it is the discovery service. So as it says, uh, it's a service that will help you to discover what it is on the platform, what kind of data you will find, uh, what data you will find on a specific city, uh, what data are available for last month. So all this information are into our catalog and this catalog is accessible through the discovery service. So this service is accessible through CSW or OpenSearch 
uh, two standards uh, that are easy to use and will help you to see what is really available on the platform. So when you find what is available on the platform, most of the time you will need to download the data or at least access it. So for that, you will use a download service, uh, which offer two ways. So S3 access, very efficient performance uh, available on the platform, and also a REST API, maybe more generic and that will fit other users' case. So you have it also available, this download service for, for free. And in the middle, you have the view service, which is pretty, I will say, handy because the view service will help you to extract only the part of the data you need and also to specify uh, a, a time range where you want the data. So you can say, I want this area on this time range and this service will only send you the data you are looking for. So this view service is pretty convenient to do time series and analyze situation where there was a, an evolution through time or maybe you want to, to focus on an event that happened in this area. So the view service is uh, pretty handy, as I say, and will, uh, will help you to save time because you are only downloading the data you want to download. So as I say, most of these services are uh, available for free. You can try them for free. The view service comes with a cost if you are using it on a large usage, I would say. So thanks to these different services, uh, you, can, uh, you can start building services. And we saw, we, we are showing here some example of what you can do with these services. So for example, we have a page that is available on, on the marketplace of Mundi. It is, called, it is called Mundi Explorer. So it's a way to show what you can do with all the services just show. So this, this page is based on all the Mundi API. You can display images, so nice images. Uh, you can uh, have a look at the statistic of the platform, so the number of products uh, available, um, the size that represents the archive. You can even search for products through different parameters. Uh, and of course, what, he, what is of interest, sorry, is of interest is that you can find all the source code of this website into the page. You can access it and reuse it for your own usage. So this is really a baseline uh, in order for you to be able to use your, uh, the code as a, as, a, as a start point. Another important service to do prototyping is the Jupyter Notebook. So I talked to it before. So here we are really want people to get familiar with Mundi. Uh, we have two ways of using Jupyter Notebook. I would say an introduction with very simple usage notebook. I will talk about just on the next slide and advanced usage notebook that are made to really explore with more accuracy what Mundi is offering. So to get started, we have two different, um, two different notebook. Uh, one of it is, is pretty simple. It is just how can I search for data into Mundi? So all is explained in this notebook and we try to make it very easy to use for uh, beginners uh, in the Earth observation world. So here in this example, you're just entering the name of a city, a any city. So our program will find uh, the location of it. It will extract what we call the B box. Uh, and after you will just refer to which collection you want to access, uh, what period of time. And as soon as you give all this information, we're going to be downloading the image and we're going to just be displaying it into the notebook. So it is a pretty simple way of using Mundi as a starter, uh, but we try to make it easy as an introduction in order to get familiar with what you can do uh, with our service. So here, for example, is Paris uh, last September, uh, and you can just change the, the location and go anywhere else uh, in the world in order to extract uh, another data. And of course, when you have the data, here we're just displaying it, but you can use it, do some processing on top of it. So the idea is just to give you, as I said before, a starting point in order after to do 
uh, more things on, on this image and maybe apply a specific processing on it. So th this is Chicago being uh, loaded. So uh, as Paris, same same demand. Uh, we did not. We just change the location. It was Paris. We changed it to Chicago. So this notebook you're looking here is available on our website, um, and you can use it uh, as you want uh, in order really to discover. And you can even uh, use the Python code which is behind to develop your own program. So we started with uh, uh, an optical image of. Um, of Paris and Chicago, so meaning only three bands, red, green, blue. Here, we're looking at an index called Moisture Index, which we show uh, how moist is the soil for the area. And so here you have uh, on-fly processing applied to the image, but the, the way you access it is the same, just one parameter change. And here you can see how the American city are, are structured with a lot of squares. Um, and uh, and crossroads. Um, so that was the example for what we call an easy search uh, on Sentinel images. So next next example is how you can generate a time series uh, using Mundi. So again, we are into our, the Jupyter notebook of Mundi. So as I say, this is accessible as soon as we create a free account on the platform, and we have a lot of example that are using uh, the different APIs. So this example here, you will retrieve a large number of images from an area. You will specify the time period you want to, to have a look at. So we provide some examples of, I would say, area where there was uh, an evolution through the last four years. So you can select one of it and download it, but of course you can select the area you want. Uh, so I would go a bit quicker on this presentation. And so th this um, this video are, are available on on YouTube. Uh, I, I can uh, let you know about the links of it in order for you maybe to uh, to do the processing on your own with your area with the period you are looking for. Um, so as I say, you specify an area, a time of interest. It will it will download all the images that, that fit your request. And after that, you will be downloading uh, all the images. So th this was a time series on Istanbul Airport in Turkey. Uh, so the program downloaded about uh, 24 images of, of this airport. And what you can see at the end is an animation uh, in, in GIF where you see the evolution of this airport. So this airport was built uh, lately, in the last year, and at the end, you can download uh, your animation and have a look at it, and uh, even be able to have each single image to do your own analysis of, of what happened. So here you see the animation showing how this area evolved in the last uh, years. So starting in 2016, so four years of data. Um, that show how this airport was built and now how this airport is used. So th this were example of prototyping on, on Mundi with Jupyter Notebook and other tool. So here now some example of what you can do with our platform uh, in terms of industrial processing. So we have some partners that are working uh, on project, on services that are bringing services to customers. So I'll show you some example of what they do on our platform. So just to start, I talked about the support before, but where we see us useful for the support is really to optimize your usage of the cloud. I really want to help people to use uh, the technology that uh, optimizes this usage. So we have experts in Kubernetes, in Docker. Uh, we are using the OpenStack APIs. Ansible, Terraform, so this kind of technology a lot on our platform, and we're trying to share this knowledge in order to have efficient management of resources. And we really see the cloud as a, a step forward in order to be using less energy, uh, less money as well, so less cost for you, but the same result at the end. So it's really in this 
uh, way of thinking that we bring in to our customer and we help our customers and users to use the cloud efficiently. Uh, we are also promoting data coming from users. So if you developed algorithms that are, that are creating new set of data that you think are interesting for users, we are able to share this data with the community and have uh, interfaces that will help the, the usage of this data. So a few examples about uh, what we've done with some of our partners. So we develop with a French partner called Meos, an application called Urban Green, which is reducing the urban heat islands uh, in the cities. So we try to avoid having more than 50 degrees in some area in the city where you have no vegetalization as, uh, uh, at all. So we try to advise uh, some cities to have more trees, more gardens, in order to reduce the temperature into the cities. So this tool is helping to detect this area where the, the temperature is very high and the vegetation index is too low. And we try to, to help them to have uh, to make the right decision in order to lower the temperature into the city. So this topic for us is important because it's impacting most of the citizens and a, a large part of, uh, of the world uh, where the summers can be very hard uh, uh, for some of them. Um, other example of using satellite data, so it's uh, in the agriculture, we, we're helping people to monitor farming uh, with a platform. So we developed some uh, analysis ready data products that are helping to see uh, if uh, a field is uh, growing in a, in a good pace, uh, if it needs more water, uh, if the vegetation index is evolving on, on the right way as well. Uh, so we're trying to develop um, process images that help to make some decision and to detect uh, some change that are maybe not um, not wanted. So we're trying to really uh, help uh, uh, countries in Europe to do that. So we're working with Italy, Netherlands, Malta, lately with Germany. We, we hope to work with UK and France in order to be able to help them to have a better management of the crops on a country scale, on a country scale most of the time, uh, in order to optimize the yield and help the farmers to have better yield of the field. Another example where we've made a lot of processing is to help uh, one of our, our partner called GAF, which is doing for, uh, uh, for, for a Copernicus service, a land use classification. So they had to classify 6 million of square kilometers of lands to know what was into this land. If it was a city, if it was agriculture, if it was something else. So they created a, a maps of all Europe. So we help them by processing a lot of products to help them to produce this map of classification. Uh, they've done a lot of machine learning on the different area they had in charge in order to be able to deliver at the end a new Copernicus service uh, for the land use uh, classification. So important projects for them and also for us because we, we deployed a lot of processing power for them to reach their objective. Uh, another project where we are also in charge is uh, what called uh, the RACE, so rapid action against coronavirus using Earth observation. Uh, so we supported this initiative by storing data that are useful for this uh, initiative. So I won't go through details, but uh, you will find the link of the two websites. So it's race.isa.int, where you will find a different kind of data being shown on the map that shows the impact of the coronavirus through the, uh, on the activity uh, around the world. So interesting point where Earth observation data are useful to see um, how the societies are, are working. Um, so here we have a few examples of what we do with Mundi, prototyping industrial processing. Um, so to, 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 to end this presentation, I will give you some roadmap for the next months and years of Mundi. So what we are trying to develop today is having 
uh, even more data coming. So it's not only data that we host, it can be just data we access and we try to add value to this data by combining uh, satellite data with this new data. Uh, and also our objective is, is to provide more reference data to our users to be able to build services with all the data they need. Uh, we will also make very high resolution data and drone data more easy to access in the coming months. Uh, we are working on different use cases, doing some combination of data. So I talk about you, you, IoT data, but UAV data, so drone data are also very important. Very, very high resolution, of course, <clears throat> sorry, and reference data. So all this combination of data are bringing more value uh, for services to be built. Uh, last two points is also helping users to upscale their processing. So we're happy to see people doing some prototyping with our platform, but at one point they will go to go to a larger scale. Maybe they would like to apply the processing to a whole country or maybe to, to a continent. So we want to be there for them in order to do the processing they, they want to do, but at a lower cost than if they were doing it themselves. So that's something we want to do by using uh, the knowledge of Atos as well in HPC uh, as a service and we'd like to bring this service into the cloud. And last point, it's also very important for the platform to focus on Green Deal application, so trying to be pushed by the European initiative of the Green Deal in order to develop services using the observation and being useful for uh, most citizens because we, we believe that Everyone today uh, wants to to have a better knowledge on what uh, Earth is going through and trying to to help uh, to do things better in the future. Uh, so I hope you had a, a good overview of what the platform can offer. So the platform is open. It's available on uh, mundiwebservices.com. You can, as I say, create an account, have a look at every services I talk about and we stay available. Uh, either you can contact me directly, or we have also a help desk available on contact at mundiwebservices.com uh, where you can ask your question. And today I'm, uh, I'm happy to answer your question.